There is no doubt that we are in an era of insensitivity and self-centeredness. The number of stories of persons taking advantage of others, deliberate head scams, is unimaginable. Did I do wrong? Whilst all this happened and you seem to have lost it all for humanity, we have some individuals who decide to do good, be kind, offer help and care. And guess what they are met with? Ungratefulness. Yeah, I'm just tired. I'm tired of everything. Some so terrible that it changes the course of a person from being all good super nice to a heartless cold bloody monster. Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Sir Java and I create content on life, business and money. Untold concepts that will empower you in our world of uncertainties. Subscribe for more and when you do, please hit the sweet notification bell. This is the birth and rise of ingrates. If it were, if it were you, if it were you, I will leave you. I will leave you. An ingrate can be defined as a person who doesn't show proper thanks or appreciation for a gesture. The worst form of it is when they show no appreciation or thanks and you end up becoming their enemy for absolutely no reason. You probably have your own experience with ingrates. I gave you life and you want to take life from me? Is that what you do to people? Being ungrateful is a character that is better out of the training one receives whilst growing up, plus several other life experiences. Let's look at how it all starts. A lot of parents train their kids with this clause in mind. I don't want my kids to go through what I went through. In most cases meaning, they don't want their kids to experience the hard part of life they experienced. Although this is a good cause, it can form the foundation of creating an ungrateful human later in life. You see, children who get to receive what they ask with the least hesitation possible tend to think it is their right to get whatever they want from persons they deem responsible with zero regards to what their provider has to go through to make their request or needs available. Well, I'm here with Ronald and Taisha. Ronald is what I call a taker. In this world, there are givers and there are takers. Ronald is a taker. He has said, yes, I take money from my mother. I don't care that she is working 120 hours a week. I don't care that she's making sacrifices. I don't care that she's living in a small bedroom because I've taken over the master suite. I don't care that my little sister is making sacrifices. All I care is that I get what I want when I want it, and I want it right now. Normally, if the relatives of life set in early in say between adolescence and early adulthood, most persons will as soon as possible begin to respect the process of providing anything for oneself and the effort it truly takes to stretch for others. However, because this is not the case for most individuals, majority normalize the act of getting whatever they want from others into adulthood and this is where the real problem begins. You say that you don't think you're spoiled, why not? I'm not spoiled you at all, I just feel like I deserve the lifestyle that I have and my allowance should be raised more. I don't see that as being toiled. Entitlement, which can be defined as having a sense of deservingness or be on the favor when little or nothing has been done to deserve special treatment, becomes the story of the person after normalization. You see, they get so used to things being done for them that they walk around with their chest out with very high expectations. They have zero regards for process and effort of others and deep down in their minds, they are kings and queens that deserve all the special treatment from you, their servants. Dr. Phil, he feels as though that he's like the king of the world. Like I am. Everything I revolves am. around him. They watching me. I'm if, the king. This is my show. If I cook dinner, that he's supposed to get the first plate of the house. If we go out somewhere um, traveling, he has to be in the front seat. It's just like everything is all about Ryan. What happens now, yeah? God forbid, yeah, if your husband gets sick and it can't work. Then I have to find a new one. I have to find a new one. Surprisingly, there are also persons who do not get to experience the pampering phase of life but still grow up to be highly entitled and grossly ungrateful. Example is poor people and entitlement. What do you think causes that? Please leave your opinion in the comment section. With all this said, one key player we can take out is social media. Social media is considered a community on its own. The only difference is, just like you can't stretch your neck to see what's happening in Nairobi from Lagos or see what's happening in Los Angeles from Atlanta, with social media, that seems to be kind of possible at the click of a button. People get to share events in their lives for their audience and followers to see. And as simple as this may sound, it is the foundation for a greater percentage of the entitlement in the modern age. Example, someone sees another person of their age, gender, displaying a certain kind of lifestyle and quickly jump into, this is what I deserve. Why shouldn't I have that too? This is a standard. I'm even more beautiful. I'm the one that deserves this. 
Now that on itself could be considered as motivation, but in the books of entitled people, it is different. They deserve all of that at the cost of someone else's effort. Now think about how many people badly want things they see on social media without worrying about the price tag. In their minds, they deserve it. They just want it. They must get it. Someone else is responsible for the bill. Gross entitlement. And if they happen to receive anything from a kind person, because they have gross disregard for process and care less about how things get provided, a simple thank you and show of gratitude sadly becomes heavy to express. How we individually classify people as ungrateful is based on the environment we grew up from and the morals we were taught growing up. Meaning, if you are brought up from a home where you were taught to say thank you twice for anything you received or kindness that was shown to you, you most likely will respect the effort of others who even serve you water at the restaurant, although you are paying for it. On the other hand, entitled ingrates who are trained to believe that they are special growing up expect the world to bow and worship their command, and will most likely exhibit less kindness and less appreciation towards the effort of others who goes to the ends of the world for them. So the real question now is, how do you handle ingrates or ungrateful people? One good way is to expose them to your process. You see, most ingrates do not truly and specifically know in detail what it takes to truly get things done for them. The truth is, they are mostly at the front end receiving the fruit and result of countless processes they are clueless about. Sometimes exposing them to your process will bring them knowledge which might eventually bring appreciation and gratitude and finally repentance. Sadly, this is no guarantee of repentance. Some ingrate or ungrateful people, even after knowing your process, will go, and so what? Others like you are doing better for people, so what's the big deal? Do you, does it bother you that your mother is sacrificing, doing without, and working 120 hours a week and burning herself out and you're contributing nothing? Does that bother you? No, it don't bother me. This takes me to my second suggestion, which is taking care of yourself. Sadly, the victims of ungrateful people are most of the time people with good hearts. You and I can do very little about how ungrateful people conduct their business. To be fair, some ingrates do change, but they do so at their own realization and timing, which you might not be able to control. What you can control, however, is taking care of you. I produced a video titled, What My Parents Forgot to Mention, Coldest Reality. It will be at the end of this video. Do your best to do a full watch. It will provide some concept that will help you master self-care and prioritization as well as avoiding regrets. Parenting has become harder than ever before because as a parent in today's world, you are competing for your case attention with all the available factors, specifically social media and friends you might not even know, but we can still leave it to chance. If there's anything we can give to kids and teenagers under our watch to make them better adults, gratitude should be on top of the list. Let me know your thoughts about gratitude and ungratefulness. What advice would you give to a younger you watching this video right now? What do you have to tell someone dealing with an ingrate currently? Kindly share them in the comment section. Thank you very much for staying up to this point. It means a lot to me and I hope you have gotten value from the video that you just watched. I also want to invite you to the Smart Life community. It's a very amazing group on Facebook. The link is going to be down in the description. Check it out as well. If you like this content, uh, you can hit a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to hit the notification so that you'll be notified anytime new videos are uploaded. But my word to you is this, my friend. Always remember that no matter the matter, it only matters when we decide to make it matter. Whatever you are doing, don't stop. And hello, my friend. Keep going. I'll see you soon.